This is a custom setup analysis for the Porsche 911 GT1 at Jerez Chicane under these track conditions. It's Porsche time. Welcome back to the 27. What a great track Jerez is. Your aero package really needs to be dialed down here. We're going to be going out over a setup workflow. Stick around to the end because there's a special promotion that some of you could be interested in. But let's get into it. I was able to squeeze an extra half second out of the car. And the telemetry data will show us precisely where. But for the most part, the recent physics of the game have made these default packages much, much more competitive than ever before. Period. So choosing between this build and the default build, it's a matter of driver preference, which is entirely up to you. That being said, the methodology for the defaults in this build are indeed completely different, but end up in similar places lap time wise, at least in my hands. If you had to pin me down though, I'd say that the custom build is a bit more nimble, more aggressive, which I believe would give the car more potential in the right pair of hands. In other words, a higher ceiling. But that's all simply conjecture at this point until I hear back from one of you. For me, I find it preferable as it allows me to make moves like the one on the Mercedes for the win. So let's talk about my workflow. It all starts with the brakes. Brake feel is extremely important and I always find the Porsche to have too much front end bite sometimes under braking. braking. With high brake pressure, it causes a sharper and more abrupt pitch forwards, making the front end dig in and your brake pedal work needs to be a lot more precise. In order to help relax this a bit, I stiffen the front springs and change the brake bias forward. This allows for more control, simple as that. I don't want to go too far forward so as, so as to push off the track. Basically, we're trying to find a good, comfortable spot between your brake foot and wheel inputs, allowing the car to turn in comfortably while still at the grip threshold. The next thing I focused on was the exit, how the car responded to throttle inputs. The differential and rear springs work hand in hand here. Together, they can be too snappy, or they can make completing the corner a struggle. If the car oversteers or snaps, you want to soften the rear springs and reduce the power ramp angle. If you feel the car sits down, doesn't want to turn anymore, you want to increase them. In this case, I wanted a more planted and controlled exit, so I softened the rear springs and reduced the power ramp angle of the differential. For mid-corner, I primarily look at the ARB in the rake of the car to connect the entry and the exit so that they're virtually seamless and almost unnoticeable. You don't want to have the back end come out if you overturn the car, and you don't want to push either. If anything, the car should slide laterally if you overcook the corner. Um, the default balance was good here, but I wanted to soften the ARB package, and I did this because it allows me to use the dampers for fine tuning a little bit better to help with tire temperatures and add some nimbleness to the car for the chicanes and the quick left rights or right lefts. For Jerez, the turn two three complex is vital to get the car shifted and the power down. You can lose a lot of time here. If you have stiff dampers and stiff ARBs, it can be a little bit touchy. All the while I was tinkling, tinkering with the aero package to make sure there was a good balance during high speed cornering, you wanna go flat out as much as you can here with some leeway for adjustments. You don't wanna burn up your rears though. Your tire temperatures can tell you a lot about the aero package under high speed corner, cornering. If the front or rear temps go up too much in relation to each other, you may need more or less wing on the front or the back. What we came up with was, a, was something that was nice on the tires, responsive when you needed it, but planted around high speed corners with just a touch of rear end looseness to allow you to play a little jazz. But let's take a look at the telemetry to see if there's anything we can learn from it. All right, here we are back with the Rizzy Sizzy Tizzy. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Uh, give me a break. It's been a long week. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of brake um, a break analysis here, but and we're better to look at the brakes, but the aero tab. <laughs> so uh, what this tells us is the longitudinal acceleration or deceleration here. And we're looking at the custom. Uh, now compare this with the, the uh, default. You can see that the the deceleration is a lot sharper. The peaks are a lot higher, so you're getting more peak deceleration. However, what I'm finding with the uh, lower brake pressure is you have a lot more control. Now, the speed difference between these two points is not that big. 
So you're not losing any time here. You're just breaking a little bit more. But what I find is that it allows me to carry more speed into the corners itself. So if you look at the fourth graph here at the bottom, take a look at these little valleys at the bottoms here. And generally speaking, overall, you're looking at more car speed carrying through the corners compared to from the defaults to the custom package. Here I even had a chance to throttle blip. So where did we gain the most time though? So this is where the, your aero, your dampers, and your brakes all come together. We're going to look at the driver tab and this is really cool. Um, we're going to do a time slip evaluation. This is how R RST it evaluates how much time you're gaining or losing compared, compared between two sessions. So here I gained a ton of time between Expo 92 and Michelin Corners. Just an absolute ton. And it wasn't necessarily because I had um, a, a faster cornering speed actually. It's because I probably had a better line, which braking also helps you do. Uh, more time slip here at, it looks like, Cito Ponds. Um, came back a little bit to the default. And then here, a huge amount of time slip between Angel Nieto and Peluki. Um, so right there, that control, that corner entry, allows you to um, have a better driving line, allows you to feel the grip on the rear tires a little bit better, get that better acceleration. Um, we wound up with about a half a second better time. Let's look at the differential. I mentioned that before. Um, the differential with the default, you can see it peaks over 10% wheel slip on the right rear in a lot of cases and sometimes on the left rear. We, left rear. We wanted to um, we wanted to balance that out a little bit. A lot of these um, high uh, these high peaks are usually curbs when the car starts to slip a little bit. But if you can tell just between flipping through the two, you can see that generally speaking, I'm keeping it under 10% wheel slip, and that's what we're shooting for there. Um, we did some damper work, stiffened it up a little bit. I think as usual, the defaults have. A, uh, a strong rebound bias. Well, we kept the rebound bias in the fronts for reasons, um, but we also did some work here. That really helps. And then finally, let's see the grip. Let me fix this a little bit here. You can see right rear wear on the default package is 12%. And these are kind of, uh, you know, that's actually pretty good, I have to say. Um, brought it back to reason together and probably... Uh, well, I didn't extract more grip, but you know, one of the reasons why that is, it's because the pressures for the default package on the tires were like maybe one to two degrees off. And let's see, let's take a look at the camber tire pressure. Wow, see how under pressure the tires are at Jerez with the defaults. But with the custom, we brought that pressure back up. Um, and that can account for more grip, but also a sloppier kind of feel. So that's why you do that. Um, let's finally look at the traction circle. Um, let's see here. Wow, okay. So let's uh, make this a little bit more logical. Okay, so back here you're looking at um, acceleration. Um, so this is your acceleration when you're turning um, left and right, and then acceleration in the straight line up here. Down here, this is your turning area and your deceleration. This is all straight line deceleration. This is when you're trail braking. These are the trail braking areas right here, left and right. So you can see with the custom package, with that extra control, I was able to bring more of these data points out into the lateral areas and concentrate them more. Um, see, it's a little bit more straight line here. Not as comfortable under braking, not as comfortable under turn in, shifting weights. But with the custom package, you can see that it's right there. And that, my friends, is the Porsche 911 GT1 at Harris Chicane. The build is downloadable from Harris Chicane Time Trial Leaderboards. I hope you enjoy it. Coming up, we'll have the Porsche Cup 3.8 as we continue Porsche Week. After that, I'll be trying not to paint the walls of Bathurst in the Mercedes AMG GT3. Oh boy. Um, I'd like to invite you to join the Steelcast Racing Network Discord channel, even if, even if it is just a lurk. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, click all the clickety clicks below or perhaps visit my Patreon page. 
Patrons have some special privileges and will have access to bonus setups and even liveries now, um, including all of the base setups for the Porsche GT3 created for the Nemesis 69's recent Crest Autosports League Championship. In the meantime, thanks for watching and take care.